Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to Jamal. What a great game that was to watch, even from a neutral standpoint, man. That was, uh, if, if you were a neutral watching it, it would have been crazy. I was scared for most of the game, but you know. You and you and everybody and, else. No, oh, yeah, most definitely. I had about five the- brief minutes of like feeling good because we had the two goal advantage, but that that lasted like three minutes, three to five minutes max. So it was a quick, yeah. it was a quick <laughs> five minutes. But yeah, before we get started, let me introduce you to everyone. First up is Richard. How are you doing today, man? I am good. I'm good. Always good when we get a when we beat Benfica. Even better when we do it uh, to knock them out of the toss. So zero complaints. Uh, and we get to do it all again on Saturday, ladies and gentlemen. So God help us all. Yeah, most certainly. And last one, at least Chris, how are you doing today, man? I'm doing good. Uh, I'm very, very happy with the result. Um, I've, I've been busy with work the past like couple weeks. Thursdays have been terrible for me, so I haven't been on in a couple weeks. Um, but I made sure that I was out of there by four, so I only missed the very, very beginning. I was like, this is an important game. You gotta be able to watch this one. Um, getting to Jamor, definitely, um, I would say an objective this season. Um, nothing won yet, obviously. Um, but reaching the final, um, unable to do so in the League Cup. Um, I'd say this one's more important and a bigger deal anyway. So if you're going to have to pick between the two, I'd rather have the, the South of the Portugal, of course. Um, but yeah, I, I'm ecstatic that we're in the final. And um, I thought that, you know, we did we definitely did enough today to, to, to secure the draw, I think. We still don't even know who the hell we're playing, by the way. We have no clue. Porto and Guimarães play tomorrow. First yeah. leg away for Porto and then second leg obviously at home. Uh, 3rd of April and 17th of April are both of those legs. So on the 17th of April, I guess we'll find out exactly who we're playing. It's between Porto and Guimarães. Uh, lastly as well, uh, shout out to Danny Comby here tonight, but shout out to him. And of course, you can follow everyone at All Things Avalard on every social media platform and podcast platform down there. Without further ado, let's get into the talking point. And that is obviously the game that just finished probably about 20 minutes ago. And that is Sporting 2. I said the wrong one, isn't it? Sporting 2. Benfica two. Let me get the actual one up before we the carry on. One up. Is this goal point already? Would they have the? Ra- I would assume they would have the rating. They're pretty quick already. with it. Usually. Yeah, it was just that they were just on top of each other, so I did the wrong one. There we go. Yeah. Uh, two all. Uh, I guess victory on aggregate for Sporting, and the lineup is as followed: Franco Israel in goal, Inacio Coates, Diamande, as Gaio, Nuno Santos, Braganza, Hulman, Paulinho, Trincao, and Yokores. Off the bench came Saint Just. Jenny, Mateus Reis, Morita, and Edwards. Richard, what are your overall thoughts of this game? Oh, first of all, p- before we get to the positives, <laughs> is Gayu and Trincao stinkers today? They were bad. Just uh, pulling up the offered... ratings, by the way, but just by looking at this. <laughs> yeah, they uh, they were so ass. Diamande wasn't great either at times, but those two in particular stood out as being bad. Is guy who offered nothing going out front. I don't think he made one forward like progressive pass uh, the whole game. Trincao was just not like himself. He was he was just running into guys. He was forcing passes. It was every dumb thing you hate to see a player do. He did. Um, credit to Frank Rizzo. He probably kept us in, the, especially in the first half, kept us in this game. Uh, five five. I know because it's it's two goals and a yellow card, but like. Really, you could bump that up a whole like to six five at least because he was huge this game. There was a couple saves in the second half. That one on Di Maria, which we'll talk about in a bit too, was just wild. Uh, not much to really say. Or that Kawach was good, although on the tying goal, I was questioning why he didn't stick out his foot for the cross, unless he's thinking it might be an own goal if it hits off him, depending. So I can kind of see that. Uh, we finally picked it up. Hulman, the banger from outside the box. Uh, couldn't be more in the top corner if you tried. Uh, and then that lead was immediately vanished. <laughs> Minutes later, they make it uh, 1-1 uh, in, on the game. Uh, we end up making it 2-1. We had chances actually even to put it away and make it 3-1. Uh, and then... Of course, they come down, score like minutes later. It was like that five-minute spell where we're like, okay, we're we're looking good. If we can get a second, we had a chance, missed it completely, and then they came down and scored, which was brutal. Paulinho was huge this game. Uh, Even 
without the goal, although the goal was huge. Uh, he was just doing a good job getting into space. Like, it's one of his first touches, I think, was the goal. He barely touched the ball. Uh, it was crazy. Uh, Joe Carras was good, although you could see they were kind of all over him for a stretch of the game, which kind of neutralized him a bit. He didn't do too much. He get he does get the uh, the uh, the assist on the one goal, so good for him. I thought when Jenny came in for his Gallo, that kind of transformed things a bit, and we saw we saw them kind of pick pick it up a bit. I think just the whole first half can be as I'm seeing the Paul Rodriguez comment. The whole first half was very sloppy. They just could not get out of their own area. Couldn't even get past half for the most part. It was just brutal. Uh, no other real fans. I thought Inacio kind of had a doo-doo game. I thought he wasn't looking great at times. He made some weird, silly decisions. Um, no one really looked outstanding except for like the goal scorers and Franco Israel, if I'm being honest. Um, that's really it. What did Israel get the yellow card for anyways? Time like, I, I think I missed Yeah. Oh, it was just, it was just a time we bumped him down a bunch. It was a stupid time wasting yellow. Okay, I was curious. I didn't really see what was going on there. Um, yeah, for me, he's my, he was my man of the match just for the several crazy saves he made. Uh, that Di Maria one in particular, uh, standing out. But he made a couple wild ones. We were talking before the show, and we we were like, yeah, I don't know if Adon makes like one or two of the saves Israel makes today. If we're being totally honest, I've I've seen enough. I they don't think we. I think we ride with Israel, even when Adon's healthy at the end of the season potentially. I think you roll with it now because he's starting to really find a bit of a rhythm now, uh, and you take it. That, that's yeah. it. I don't have much else to add to this game. It was it was a very. This was a, like you said, said. This is a very good game for the neutrals. Uh, yeah, it was back and forth, especially in the second half. Was just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um, it was it was a good advertisement. I saw. I think it was uh, Marito Pichotto on Twitter said this is a perfect advertisement for Portuguese football. Is this type of game when there's not too much bullshit? It was just good football all around. Um, but yeah, that, that's all I really have to. Uh, that's all I really have to say for this game. Yeah, fair enough, Chris. What are your overall thoughts on this game? Um, yeah, so. I uh, definitely agree with um, you know most of what Rich said. Um, I thought that like through some parts of the first half, maybe we were. I saw someone mentioned it. I, I don't know the, the uh, like that we were like sleepwalking through part of the game, and I, I could definitely feel that. Um, Bayfi could definitely like were creating better chances. I mean, I would just. Honestly, say Benfica probably played better overall throughout the whole game. They had more chances. Um, they took the initiative more. They had more possession. But part of that is kind of because they had to, right? I mean, they were they were down, so the onus was on them to try to turn the tie around. Um, so some of that is is just going to be natural. It's like when you're you're up one nothing in the 90th minute. I mean, the other team is going to be pushing, right? And you're going to be on the defensive. So. A bit of that is is certainly natural due to the circumstances, um, but yeah, I mean, I I, I could see it. Um, it felt like we had like a bunch of almost really dangerous counters, um, but just couldn't like get the final ball through. Yokerez was frustrated for a lot of the game. He's been getting man marked a lot more. He was getting man marked against Estelle as well, and kind of getting frustrated. Um, I wouldn't say he's figured out because, I mean, even when he's locked up, right, he's still going to have two great chances, three great chances a game, right? Um, and when he's not locked up, he's going to have like eight great chances, right? Yeah, so, he was still – he still had an assist and had like a couple really good chances and they still lo- – and, and like, he hit the crossbar on him. Down. Yeah, they locked him down and he shot. still could have had a goal or two. Juan Neves opted for the just fall down and grab your face uh, technique and hope that the ref just calls it. Didn't work. <laughs> um yeah so i mean even even when he's locked up i mean he's still incredibly dangerous and still gonna have his chances um so again you know not his greatest game he's not on the score sheet i'm sure he's disappointed with that any game he's not on the score sheet i think he's disappointed still had an assist could have had more um he's just he's different um i thought paulinho was very very quiet especially in the first half um 
you know, I, there was one moment in like the 20th minute. I was like, oh my God, I almost like forgot he was out there because he hadn't touched the ball in so long. Um, but, you know, sometimes it's like that. Um, the defenders, I, I actually I actually don't think that Diomande and I actually think that he, Diomande had a better game than Inacio. Um, goal point disagrees. I don't think either were particularly great. There was one also moment where, where Inacio was trying to tackle Rafa in the box from behind. He's like wrapping his leg around him. I'm like, bro, that is just, you're really playing with fire doing that. Um, I, I didn't love Inacio today, but I mean, I guess he's done enough, right? He's done just enough uh, to get the job done. Um, I liked Braganza as well. I actually thought he was our best player in the first half. Thought he was, thought it was um, unfortunate that he was being subbed off. Um, especially when like the narrative is kind of starting to form that like Morita is possibly like losing his spot a little bit and Bregas is, uh, you know, um, gaining, gaining notes in Amoni's book. Right. Um, so that this kind of in my head, at least kind of put a lid on that a little bit because Bregas is playing pretty well and he's still taking him off. So, I mean, I think Morita's still his. Is I think it's still a spot. Yeah, I think it's just a bit of. Rotation. It's not. It's not as secure as I would have said. No, he used to have a lock though, on but... it, and now the grip has loosened a little bit. But I still think yeah. he has it. Yeah. Um. And yeah, I mean, I just think that you know there was just we had enough luck. Um, great strike from Humeland. Uh, we've talked about his strikes from outside the box. Quite good at it. Quite good at it. I think he has four goals this season. Um, he's a lot got of them the, come recently, too, by the he's way. He's got Lost the banger like in him. We knew right away, you know, week three, oh, yeah. you know, week two. He's shooting. We, we could see it. Um, so I'm glad that he, he scored a banger. Pulling a right place, right time. Uh, brief moments of feeling like the tie was just completely over at 4 2 and we were just going to coast home. That lasted five minutes. Uh, some nervy moments at the end, but. Yeah done enough uh and i mean that's the most important mission accomplished they, they did what they had to do right at the end of the day yeah yeah fair enough uh i don't want to like carry on with what you guys have said one thing you guys haven't mentioned was the plug that nuno santos picked up oh on i forgot it. about that yeah well i kind of met, I, I saw it on twitter but i missed that part of like i missed that that incident. So, so it like, was probably wow. like in the first ten minutes. Yeah, I, I missed that. Just picks up a. Who brings a plug to? Who, why? It was like a, yeah, it was a see, big, I get like the lighter. Little, the lighter. One. You got the, the lighter in your pocket because you're a understand. cigarette smoker. Why? Maybe. I mean, I guess you know some people bring their phone charger. Yeah. And was the cord huge. is expensive. The cord could be yeah. like. I mean, I don't know how much it is in Canada, the UK, but like that cord from Apple can be like fifty dollars. The brick yeah, thing, pretty, the part that goes in the wall, you can just get anyone from anywhere. Yeah, um, that's it. Was the so part that's why the they wall. threw that and mm -hmm. they took the pl the it charger like this, off. It looked like the size of a phone. Definitely, yeah, that was a brick. Way. That was like <laughs> was a one euro. Crazy. That was a one euro brick from like a a convenience store or something. Yeah, yeah it was man, massive. Crazy. If if that hits him, depending on where it's thrown from as well, that's doing some serious damage. If you get a good, if you get enough height and velocity on it, it hits him in the right spot. You're you could do a little bit of damage. And yeah. it's the type of thing where it's like, even if you get caught, you're like, oh, it's just my phone charger. They might let they might let you keep it, even if they catch you with it. You know, in the they in might the say, oh, or, or. Uh, yeah. or they're just really not. There was no pad down, which is the most likely scenario. But <laughs> Archgall, I'm gonna if I'm a betting man, I'm betting that their pat down was almost non-existent. You know that meme of like the steward just like <laughs> he's just like uh, in the air. He's not uh, actually yeah, even touching the people. <laughs> he literally just, just he goes, Yeah, you're good. <laughs> Go. <laughs> that's that's every stadium in Portugal in a nutshell. That's the pat down. That's not just a Benfica problem, that's an everybody in Portugal problem. Yeah, definitely. But going through the players one by one, I guess I thought Israel was was fantastic. Like we mentioned it before, but the way he's come in in sort of a turbulent time for the sporting in general with Adam being out and him not having, he probably had what less than ten games. Where do you guys stand on him right now? I'm fine to in, ride him. Do you think that you would ride with? Would you? Are you convinced that he's our starter? Like going forward? 
there's no point swapping them out because they say that Dan's going to be back by the end of April. So what's that? Four games left of the season? Five, including if you, if you can get through that, if you get through the hellscape of games that you've had, you've already gotten through one of your toughest games. If you can get through April relatively unscathed, and you're still in a position to, at the very least, make Champions League, they're probably going to be in position to at least compete for the title. I assume. I run with yeah. Israel. I don't see. I th- I think if. If they continue on how they've been, and he continues how he's been, and keeps getting better every game, I don't see why you would mess up, mess that up. I yeah. I come from the hockey school of you ride the hot goalie. If a goalie's playing well and he's st- and he's winning you games or stealing you games, you go with that goalie. You don't just make an abrupt switch just because you feel like it. Like unless it's a, unless it's of course like an injury or suspension, that's different. But I would happily go with Israel. Uh, moving forward, and Adan can sit on the bench and uh, have a nice seat to watch the games. Yeah, I, I don't think he's convinced me yet that he's the full time starter going forward. Um, no, I, I think I think like, but he certainly convinced moment, me that he's the best yeah. keeper on our roster right now. Yeah, I think in the moment, up until like until the end of this season, till summer transfer window, I think he's the best we've got in the in the in the club. And you roll with that. Now things might change in the off season where you may still pick up a keeper, and that question becomes much more open ended. But until then, I, I I ride with him. Yeah, and I think yeah. Jack's right. He's You're not a very he's a great shot stopper, but from corners, no. If they literally has put every Patrice corner in Israel today, I actually saw a stat. I think you tweeted it, Sam. The Sporting conceded half their goals from set pieces this 40%, season. Forty yeah. percent. That sounds that sounds about right. Seems like really a lot bad. of our goals have been that. I'm surprised it's that low. I thought it would have been higher. Kicks. Yeah, I thought it would have been higher. He suffers from early To be fatigue, fair, Adon so isn't like, the greatest at dealing with crosses either. Adon isn't the greatest at dealing with anything. So <laughs> I I he suffers from early Patricio syndrome, which is he can't feel the cross, but he offers way more than what we've got right now. Uh if he can figure out how to field crosses, then there might be a player there. Yeah. For me, and for me as well, going through the back three, Inacio and Diamonde, the first 20 minutes, man, I don't know what it was. Bad. They did not want to keep the ball. They just like kept trying to move it. They didn't hold it on for like more than two seconds, kept, kept giving it away, losing possession. Um, Quartas as well to an extent. And I thought Quartas was actually pretty good this game. But there are just some things about Quartas. I think he is always consistent, but there's always one sort of error. And I think it was on the goal. Uh, but I think a second goal that that was the error, and he does sort of lose concentration a bit. Doesn't really watch where the line is. F- five centimeters offside. I don't know if that is true because it looked a, a bit more like more centimeters than five on that play anyway. But um, yeah, I thought that the back three were the original back three were very poor today. Uh, minus Kawata, then Saint Just when he came on, I thought we looked a bit more calm. Um, same with uh, Jenny as well. I thought Jenny came on and was. Levels above Ricardo's guy just for the goal. It, it, the How does Gaio have a five a five point eight? He was doo doo. He was so bad. He was awful. He yeah. didn't make one forward progressive pass. I don't. I think the whole time he was on pitch. Even even for the him. goal, Jenny should really get an assist for that because he takes a shot at Trubin. Fair enough. Trubin spill, spills it. Should probably catch it. But go straight to uh, Paulinho oh, no. for the goal. Big game. If it was hockey, we'd give him the assist. I'm just saying. We should give him the hockey yeah. assist. Don't look now, but this is the third best season of Paulinho's career from a goal scoring perspective. And there are, are the still two? some games to go. What are the other two? I'm trying to think. No, uh, the first uh, one for Braga. Braga. Like oh, yeah, he had one yeah. or two. Yeah, he had one or two. What's he at now? I believe he's, he's on be... 18 in all comps, if I'm not mistaken. I'm sure I, Sam I knows the exact right. number. We I literally had this. We, we literally had this discussion like a week, like two weeks ago. Danny and I, I think, or Sam. We literally had this discussion like two or three weeks ago too, where it's like, "What's he at?" Because we know he's at least matched what he did the season before. Yeah, but yeah, he's and been, I think he's been what, very three well. Three consecutive games as well. I want to say maybe two consecutive games. So. A lot of his, a lot of his, like his goals have been kind of far between at times, but a yeah. lot of his goals have been like at the best time, like very clutch. No, hundred percent. Yeah, but um, yeah, Jenny, I thought was fantastic coming on. He made Ozuna's life pretty difficult on that side, mm-hmm. and part of me d- does wonder because I feel Jenny starting in this game probably won't have the same effect as it did when he came on. So maybe Jenny is going to be that backup right back to come on Super when. Sub. Yeah, because I know his guard didn't make really progressive passes, but I don't think he did anything 
two. Like I wasn't like, oh, this guy, you're at fault. He for didn't make any anything. egregious mistakes. He just didn't. He offered absolutely zero. Nothing he offered negative going yeah. forward. 100%. Nothing offensively, yeah. and was a bit and was a and he, was a I, I guess the the, the, the thinking in my uh, in my mind at least is that like um, Jenny is better going forward, but um, he he doesn't offer us as much defensively. So I, I'm going to sacrifice the offensive output to have the better defender. Well, he doesn't defend that well either. So at least with Jenny, there's some you're threat getting, going you're forward. Like, you're We're getting, getting at least some positive, yeah. right? With Esgayo, like, he's not defending. He's just no. getting cooked. And offensively, there's just nothing. You're um, looking at two players who are probably pretty close to even in terms of their defensive ability, but one is far and away better offensively. I'm going to take the guy who has the better offensive sometimes it's, and is even at defending. Sometimes it's funny, and when he does something good, it's funny. It's like a joke. But we like meme the, it because it's his guy. Like, it's like when on. the team manager comes in and hits a three, right? It's like hilarious and awesome. But, I mean, we're we're a serious football team trying to win titles. I, there, yeah. he, should no, be, he should not be on the roster next year. He should have been on the roster this year. I mean – that that it's just inexplicable for for a serious team to be to be carrying players like that, let alone having them play serious minutes. Send him to Saudi. Send him to MLS. I don't care, bro. I literally don't know if he starts on like Vizela, bro. Like I don't, I I don't know. I don't know if he's even. Does like he a, start? Does he start on an MLS? Team? I don't know if he's a Liga B win quality player. Like I'll I'll be completely honest. Does, does he, he start in MLS? Does he, does he start in MLS? I think, I team, think most MLS teams wash most. I think he teams. starts in maybe like five MLS teams. Yeah, they're probably <laughs> not five great ones. If we're yeah. being honest. <laughs> but yeah, uh, New South was uh, was okay. Like nothing, nothing that I was like too egregious. The, the South to bring him off. I thought Mateus Race when he came on was actually. His one footedness becomes much more apparent when you play against better teams. Yes, yeah. it, it shows very, very quickly, very strongly. Yeah, when Mateus Reyes came on, I thought we improved. Although we did obviously concede the two goals afterwards, I thought he was actually quite good. Was decent yeah, going forward as well. I thought he was all right. Yeah, I know the two goals kind of came from kind of his side, but it was more just calamitous, stupid stuff from everybody, not just him on those ones. And, and to be fair, not to put too much praise on Benfica, and the word generational gets thrown around a lot. But João Neves is fantastic. He, he, he might really be him. Good. He he's might really be him. I, I think he this he's better than what Renato Sanchez was when he was at Benfica as well. I think he just he's not quite as flashy. Up. No, he, not he's flashy. not. Renato Sanchez had like the sexy highlights. I think João Neves yeah. are, like fundamentally, like he he's got better fundamentals as as the old heads say. He uses his body well for his size. I mean, he really is impressive. Yeah, because he's not a, he's not a huge. No, he's, a huge he's like dude. undersized if anything. Yeah. And uh, speaking of undersized midfielders, Braganza, I thought, was our best pl- outfield player on the pitch. I thought he was fantastic. I think Sarsi has been subbed, I'll be honest. I was yeah. a little surprised. It could have been a pre so it could have been a pre-thought out rotation. Like, okay, today you're I'm going wondering. 60 minutes, no matter what, you're going 60 minutes. And That's I'm what I'm wondering because they know yeah. they have a killer game again against the exact same opposition at home on the weekend. So they're probably thinking we need to kind of rest at least a few of you guys where applicable because – we're going to probably go through another war with them on Saturday. So I, I do wonder if that, like you said, Chris, if that was already something he thought he was going to do regardless. Yeah, 5.1, I don't understand it. but It's tough. Know. It's tough. tough that's, the only one, that's the only one, like, other than Israel's, where I'm like, that's a little harsh of a rating. Yeah, but no, definitely. That's, that's about it, like, on our side. But I think what Chris says about being harsh, I think it looks worse when Morita came on. He was awful. He did not, he not do a great. single thing. Right, the first two like two minutes gets a yellow. Loses yeah, I was gonna say he's booked mm-hmm. instantly. <laughs> yeah, he was was not not great. Hulman <coughs> no. though, fantastic again. He oh, it, huge. Even when he doesn't score, it, it feels like he's been the most consistent player. You could maybe put your credit there as yeah. well. But I think he's been the most consistently good player that you you notice every time he's so so good and that that finish man even at bear in slow motion you could see it curl in it was, it you couldn't well. get much more in the top corner without hitting that apex first between time. the posts like unbelievable and it was a great pass from yokos as well to fair and a good run from oh, him as well and ball. uh even in yokos's worst game he still gets an assist 
in my opinion, yeah. it's probably one of the weakest games I've seen from Jokerez all season, and he still gets an assist. Uh, Trincao especially was was not great, but he I was think asked. he was asked. Geez. I also think he was let down a bit by Esgayo at the right side as well. Like we said, no progressive passes. He had to create a lot of his own chances from uh, from center half and move up. I felt a bit. He sorry just ran in, yeah. He ran this into a lot of players. I found that's what it was. He was just running into guys on one on ones and silly stuff. Yeah, and also you know I love Paulinho. No way, that's a seven point six. Apart from the <laughs> and that one chance, he should have arguably scored with a great save from Trubin. To be fair, he didn't do that much. But I like, I mean, he scored, so I'll, I'll take it. Don't get me wrong. But considering he goat. got seven point six and Hulman got six point two, it's just like you know what I mean. That's your goat, it's, it's, though. So you allow it. He's my goat. So that's I, I will your goat. Take he's it. on the wall of goats behind you. I can see him right he is, now. Right, his his match worn sign shirt is is on. Oh, the wall of you gotta get behind. that's one. You gotta get like put it in like a nice frame. <laughs> I've got two up here. I'm just gonna replace one of the shirts that are in it currently because they're not who like. Got in the, who have you got in those ones up there that we? Can't so see? I've got. Coates on this one, and that was the one the shirt I wore when we went to uh, the sporting cafe in London when we won the league. So that oh, one's right like on. framed with a train ticket inside as well, just for, for memories. Cool. The other one's just a Bruno Fernandes one I picked off classic football shirts. They had loads there, I think it was like 45 pounds. Just thought, you know what? Buy it, put it in a frame. Fair. Why not? So it'll probably be that one I'll take away. But yeah, regardless. You got rid of the Bruno one, I'll buy it off you. <laughs> Special price for you, mate. 80 pounds. 75. <laughs> 30 pounds. You no, you're about you, I, I'm not talking about Canadian. I just dollars, told you pounds. Know. I just told you pounds. I'll pay the pounds. Okay. I gotta pay exchange. Okay. You gotta give me something. My money's monopoly money. You, am right? I charging you like Loja Verde? You're taking a 30 or a 30 pound uh, <laughs> shipping fee on that. <laughs> if, you, if it's 30 pounds shipping, forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> No, it went down a bit. It's actually like 26 now. Holy oh. shit. Let me order. That's because I just bought this the other day. But that's the US. I wonder if it's still 30 going to Canada. Oh, I'll true. let you know. Yeah. I want to order. I got to order something for my nephew. And I got. I want to order that uh, Retro Manuel Fernandez shirt. So I'll let you know what the shipping <laughs> is uh, eventually. <laughs> we'll have our, our but, monthly Loja Beard uh, update. <laughs> but yeah, I guess in, in the game, I've only got a few more things to say. Uh, Edwards came on, did that one good run. I think we should have gone down from that Florent uh, Florentino tackle, stayed up, fair enough, and then lost the ball. Yeah, so pretty much that was that was Edwards', Edwards game. Pretty, yeah, I mean, he didn't invisible, didn't, have, really. didn't really have, have a lot, didn't do a whole heck of a lot if we're being, yeah, but but didn't have a lot of a lot of time to do so. But uh, yeah, lastly, just Jokeres, man, like I, I thought this was probably his weakest game for us, maybe. Okay, if you if you I think he's had one weaker. That, I was gonna say the one they got sent off in like eight minutes, but I'm, I'm not I'm not counting that one against Drum. <laughs> was it Drum Grass? I think. Oh no, it was uh, the Polish. Thing. It was a Europa League though. Yeah, uh, I, it's it's one of his weak. I don't know if the, it's his weakest. I think he's had one of. a couple stinkers. It's one of. It's like top three, top four, but it's not the weakest. Oh yeah, true against Braga maybe I put out there as well. Yeah, the there, I was gonna say he had stinkers against Braga. Um, so I, I would say this is probably like third or fourth on the list of stinkers. And even so, getting an assist, and there was still some good chance he hit the bar. He hit the assist. bar. Like if, if he scores off of one of those good chances, like he probably gets bumped up to like a fucking eight point zero. <laughs> like, I should have got a, a second assist of Paulinho. Yes. Yeah. As, yeah like he he had chances and he had like a chance for assists. Like it, it's a game of edges at the end of the day, right? Yeah. There is a few um, you know, controversial things in this game. And one of them I can't show the clip for obvious reasons. That is the uh the penalty shout from uh, Rafa. I'll send it in the, the group chat so you guys can see. The one where he um, kicks Kolata's yeah. leg. Where he kicks Kolata. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know that's, about that's, that show. That's the one the Benfica fans are Mining up and about. about. Yeah. What did you guys think of the... Um, I think it was Rafa. Uh, he's battling for a loose ball with Nuno Santos in the first half, and he ends up stepping on his leg. You guys make yeah. anything of that one? I think no, it's an accident. Really. I think it's an accident. I think, well. I think I just, I've seen some moaning about yeah. it. That's all. So I thought I'd bring it up. I, I think it's just kind of uh, it's just an unfortunate accident, incidental contact, and it's just one of those things that happens. I don't think I don't think that one was much to moan about on either side. Yeah, but um, I thought, in all fairness, 
Pinheiro <coughs> referee famously doesn't like sporting. He did all right. Uh, there, there wasn't really. This any is the first game that Juan Pineda's ref sporting in like two years, right? It's been no, a since Gimarães. Gimarães away, we'll be lost. He was refereeing oh. that game. Was he the ref? Oh, game? oh, he was. Yeah, oh, so I, I thought I saw an article. That, I thought I, I read an article. That was I blocked like, that game. I blocked that game for been a while. No, I'm pretty sure he was the referee. This in that season one because, we lost three two. Yeah, because yeah. the the shout for their was it the our penalty or their penalty? I can't remember the game because I didn't watch it, but I remember uh, Verandas coming out and speaking out against him, saying that we don't want to be refereed by him anymore. I'm pretty sure it was this season anyway. He, well, uh, they did that. I mean, he's the, do you remember the Kawats Taremi stamp yellow red yeah, card incident? He was the yeah, that was him, game. right? Yeah, that was him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was and him. also Paulinho getting sent off in the Allianz Cup final for the elbow on the Tavio. Uh, well. Oh yeah, I forgot about that last. Oh um, yeah, you're right. John Pino season, didn't yeah. officiate that game, Sam. Yeah, I think it's because we haven't had a, like that's the only game we've had. Him, I think <laughs> that's, that's not season. even been that long. <laughs> All no, right, yeah. well today there, I don't think he. he there he wasn't did. any real. I he didn't it was make history well today or anything. <laughs> No, I thought it was, it was actually quite reserved to these yellow cards. Only what I thought it was letting them play a bit. I didn't mind it. Four, four, five, but like most of them, you could kind of justify. Like there, I didn't really have any issues with any of them. Um, Yeah, yeah, no real for once, no real big Kazus for the most part, save for like the one kind of penalty shout from Benfica, which I don't really think it's much of a shout, but agree to disagree. It's funny that video, like I said, when I tweeted it, it cuts off the second angle, which clearly shows a bit more of when... Uh, you can even see it in the first one a little in bit. In the first angle, you can still yeah. kind of make it out if you're paying attention. If you know what you're looking for, yeah. But you, yeah. the second one is very obvious. But yeah, like no no real... Like no one really got ripped off in any big way for once, which was nice to see. Like there's, there's not much to moan about, thankfully. It was a relatively tame, well raft game, which... which we don't get a lot of those. We we it's sad that we have to celebrate. The ref was great. The ref did and they um much. the ref did his <laughs> and job. And they still the surrounded ref the ref after the well. game. <laughs> they still surrounded the ref after the game. I expect I expected that to happen regardless. Like you kind of have to do it, right? Yeah. If you go out, you any of to... you're trying you're trying to. I guess save face maybe is the best. Way I guess whenever the, any of the big three or even big four lose, it's sort of I mean, the way to go. Well, I mean, happened. I know it's off topic, but Porto this past weekend. I oh, mean... Porto went ballistic. <laughs> yeah, they're studio. they're, uh, they're jo- it's Jover for Porto Bro. this season. It's Jover for them. <laughs> the, the Champions League dude, sponsor. that was one of some of the most ridiculous theatrics that I've ever seen. That was crazy. <laughs> and the after was the car crash interview from Pino de Costa. I don't know if you've seen it. But I, I think it was yesterday or the day before. It. He was he just enough. it's just so bad. It Bro, is, uh, he yeah, keeps cool. doing these interviews. I, I was watching the one that was on the other day because like my but it was just on the TV. Yeah. Um I, what do Portistas think of this? Because I feel like the more he talks, the, the less worst? confidence he inspires. Yeah, the worst. one of one of one of he should yeah. not speak until after the election. He should go into his basement and lock the door. I think that's yeah. probably the best yeah. strategy. One of my good friends is a Porto fan. He's like port like loyalist, like the probably like the, the proper Porto die fan. Yeah. And he, I think, a lot of the sentiment on, among Porto fans is like, "Thank you for what you've done." Obviously, probably great. Thanks for the trees. memories. It's time to go. It's time. It's <laughs> time. Much. It's time to go. <laughs> But he, it's the way he's going out is not it's, great for them. It's, yeah. not, he, it's not what he would I mean, have He still he might win, but he still might win. Yeah. He might edge it out. I, I think, think it's going to be I think, I think he's going to win. I was it's looking at 80-20 like a month ago, but I think the margin is shrinking. I think the margin is going to be gonna closer. Pull it like, out. Every, every time they lose another game, it's going to go. It's gonna every go every bad True. game they have and every dumb outburst from him or anybody on the team just worsens his game. I think it's close. The cup to, is like, really the cup will. I mean, they have two games, and if they crash out of the cup, I mean, it's their last chance for a trophy, right? So yeah. Um, yeah. as sad as it is in Portugal, like that, that could be the ultimate determiner of yeah whether or not he yeah. wins another term or not. The two it quotes might... from the interview that that make me laugh is the first one he says they would have got to the Champions League final if they beat Arsenal. Yeah, that was awesome. And the second one was uh ever since Village Boas announced his candidacy. <laughs> the rest changed their decision. Like, I don't <laughs> that's that's I don't think that's a thing. Yeah. I would love that to be true. But... I would love for that to be the case, but I don't the, the, think that's a thing. The powers that be, the invisible hand is uh pro Village Boas. <laughs> here's here's a thing. 
if all of the big three are constantly getting screwed, then none of us are getting screwed. <laughs> like, we can't all be getting screwed at the same time because that just doesn't make sense. Either we're all victims or we're none of us are victims. <laughs> it's, it's a Porto mentality, and I think it's it's in store from Sergio Cossacel, where it's like, you don't lose. I know it's, it's difficult to lose, especially that, that level. Oh, it's lose. difficult to lose, but like, it's always, it's, whenever Porto lose, it's never, we weren't good enough. It was always something. Even Arsenal, always, it was never, we weren't good enough. It was, the talk, headlines at the end of the game was, Arteta said something about Sergio Conza's family. Sergio Conza had to, <laughs> yeah. you know, cause a big incident in the middle of the pitch. It's and a, it's a like shame that. because I try, I do link Conza a good coach and I like players on Porto as well. Like there's good players. I'm like, man, you're, I'd love you on my team. And it's so sad to see them be such sore fucking losers. Yeah, bro. I, I I used to sub, kind of support maybe sporting getting Conte so. Um, I'm kind of. And every, so has every Danny effort. in the past. I'd love to hear if Danny has updated himself. I, all of us. I think one he's point too fucking another, unhinged, but... man. I, I don't think I want any part in him and his family's unhinged behavior. Yeah, I, at this point, like I, every. Really he can't even keep it together at a U nine tournament, bro. No, like the man every, is just every unhinged. Dumb outbur- with every dumb outburst, my want to have him as like a potential manager in the future lessens every time. Could you could you imagine if we had him during like the Bruno de Carvalho era? Um, I also think like, I don't think I don't think the club in England exists or Italy. I think he would get banned like for a lot longer than he does in Portugal. Well, because Portugal, Italy, he could get away with it. I we think. don't run a little yeah. bit, yeah, in Italy, because and also in Spain, because like the OCMO. Senator, Turkey, Senator Turkey, 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 Turkey depends on the it. team he goes to, though. Yeah, that's true. That's send, a good him, point. send him to Turkey; he'll get away with it there. I'm sure. <laughs> he'll get rewarded. <laughs> you can get, that. you can get, you can get away with attempted murder in Turkey. <laughs> Be okay in their football stuff. Yeah, but could yeah. you imagine if he was our coach when like Bruno Carvalho was the president? It would have been. It would have been it would have been a train wreck. Them two would have had a fist fight on the game. <laughs> I think they would have, I think they would have had to stop the game because they would have fought on the bench. I <laughs> mean in person also. <laughs> he was coach. even angry with that. <laughs> Fair enough, man. Uh but before we still have one more game to go, but before you do that, uh Chris, who is your man in the match for this game? Uh Couple decent options. There's a couple choices. I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go with Braganza. Ooh, okay. okay. Fair enough. Uh, Richard, what about you? I'm gonna go with Big Franco Israel. I'm gonna go with Israel. I thought he he kept, especially in the first half, kept us in the game. Um, had a couple, had some really wicked saves. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with him. He's earned it. Yeah, I'll give it to Israel as well. Um, I thought fantastic, you know, the goals that he considered weren't his fault. Um, yeah, just looked a, a level above for me. Uh, so yeah, I'll give it to Israel as well. Uh, but yes, we do have one more game to talk about, and that was the one on the weekend versus Estrella. And it was a 2 1 victory. Let me get the right game up this time. There we go. And the lineup was as followed uh, Franco Israel in goal, uh, Mateus Reis, Diamonde, St. Juice, Jenny, Nuno Santos, Braganza, Morita, Trincao, Polio, and Iocarez. So I'll start off quickly. Uh, that is Ralph Corner, man. Like in the laws of science, how do you punch a ball forward? And you go <laughs> Why do you got to punch it forward <laughs> and it comes backwards? That's yeah. bro managed to break, break the laws of physics. The only thing I could think is like maybe if he closed his eyes so he's not actually looking where he's punching as he's bro's, punching. No, out. bro's actually an airbender. I just, I just, could, I just could not believe what I was seeing. And to be fair, when that happened, I, I thought we, we're gonna lose or we're gonna draw this game. Oh, it I felt like it was that was a trap happen. game, yeah. And even still, two one, it wasn't a very comfortable. A lot of, a lot of games, a lot of chances. Sorry, a lot of minutes, a lot of chances to go in that game. Uh, yeah, Paulinho scoring again. What can I say, man? He's just, it was a great header as well and a great cross from the Trincao. Yeah, it was Trincao, wasn't it? Yeah, it was Trincao. Great cross from Trincao as well. I think Chris said it in the chat. We've seen Paulinho miss those. And it does feel like a different Paulinho now that he's actually buried mm-hmm. that. And it was a really good good finish from him as well. Um, but yeah, nice I, I thought, yeah, definitely. Uh, and I thought Braganza again. Uh, two games in a row that I thought he was probably one of the best players on the pitch. Trincao gets man of the match deservedly, so I think it was was very good as well. But uh, Braganza, man, he oh, we did have a conversation about him. I want to say about maybe two months ago, maybe a month ago, saying that you know 
he's a good player, but we don't think he's going to make it here. Doesn't really fit the system. And I think ever since that, maybe he was watching. I don't know, but he came. He took. Came he in. saw that, and he was like, and then it became personal with him. That's what it was. Yeah. And, but he has been really good, and Great. it's it's re- like even this game, he was replacing Hulman, so it's the pivot of Bragans Morita. I thought Bragans filled the, the the hole quite well. And even when Hulman came on, I thought you know it was, was still okay, but. Braganza was was really good and he's sort of improving every game. It reminds me of like when Koresma was going through that patch. He didn't he's not playing the what the last he played in this game, come off the bench, but he's not actually had that starting role. But it does feel like every game is getting better and better. So hopefully it continues towards the end of the season. And we can see what happens there. Um other standard performers as well. Nuno Santos again getting the goal. Thought he was was decent enough. Didn't really uh didn't notice the mistakes. Mateus race for Inacio, that was uh as soon as Nasio came on, we looked we looked a lot better, I think. Um, but to be fair, I can't really remember much of this game because it does feel like a long time ago, even though it was what less than five days ago. So it was Friday. It was Friday, yeah. Yeah, Friday. Yeah, so like ago. five, six days ago. So yeah, uh, not really what I can remember. But I well, I can remember is Trin Cal being the best player on the pitch because he was very good. Uh, but yeah, uh, Richard, what were your thoughts on on this game? Oh well, Miguel Lopes had Jokeres in his pocket, apparently. <laughs> we a lot of flack for that. They were like, he was clearly joking. I was like, oh, so he was, was I. <laughs> he got so much flack. I'm like, man, can't even make oh, a joke on Twitter anymore, for God's that's, sake. That's why I, just, it, like... I started the tweet off saying, despite losing 2 0, even though it was 2 1, <laughs> and, you know, being near bottom of the league, that was my joke. But... <laughs> uh, I thought I was, I thought he was being kind of funny, but I was like, whatever, who fucking cares? Um, not, not. I'm not gonna add too much more to what you said, Sam. I thought Trincao was great. I thought Paulinho had a nice, tidy finish. Uh, Nuno Sanchez was good uh, both ways on defense, and of course, getting uh, getting the goal was a nice job to clean up the rebound. Um, but Aganza was great. I thought Marita actually looked good as well. Uh, Saint Just, Jenny both looked looked great. Uh, Ishgayo, Hulman, and Kurejma, like they were kind of the main subs that came in. Didn't really. They just didn't do much, partly because they just didn't have much time to really make much of an impact. Uh, they were it was two one. They were kind of coasting. Uh, I do agree that when Inasiu came in for Mateusz Reich, um, they kind of they kind of shored up defensively and they kind of calmed down a bit. There wasn't so much uh, things got a little less sloppy. Not that they were super sloppy. Um, yeah, nothing to really to add. Joe Carez was locked down, kind of. Uh, he he did all right. Got into space here and there, but. It kind of just allowed for guys like Trincao and Paulinho and the rest to kind of get into the spaces as needed. It kind of left them open, which was nice. Uh, it's two one win. We have a chance to uh, now go what four points up this weekend. We still have the game in hand. Like who the hell knows, man? Yeah, we could be uh, we could be in very good or bad mood in the next like week or two, depending on some of these games. <laughs> we could be we could be uh, we could be. We're gonna be needing the calculators pretty soon. It's about that. Yeah. It's about that time. The only issue with this Benfica game is obviously we just went we through. just played them, so they're gonna be the one in revenge straight away. Oh, they're you know they and understandably because they played great today and like they would have been deserved winners today. They I mean, should have scored at least opinion. five in that first. They should have. Played. They should have peppered our ass with goals in the first half. And if that they're happens again on Saturday. Win we will be in trouble. They are going they, they're to not going to miss those chances again. They are going to be pissed off coming into that game. There are what you don't need them to be already. It's a derby game. They're already going to be motivated. The last thing you need is for them to be in a bad mood with a point to prove. But um, on the bright side, we'll we are at home this time. So we will have a lot it is more. At the, it is at the Avala. We've, we've made the Avala a fortress for the most part uh, this season. Um, well, even in the first leg of this game, we were fantastic in in the Avalad. Yeah, this game, the, yeah. The, the game. I I, th- so. I, th- I think I, either way, it's going to be a war on Saturday. Uh, not to look too far ahead, because we're still talking about this game. Um, but yeah, it's we need we need to keep winning the games until we have that game in hand played, just to you know kind of keep keep up, keep the pace. Um, you know, depending on what happens this weekend, we kind of give ourselves a little bit room to kind of have a little fuck up down the line if if happens. We still have some. So I have a couple of hellscape games, especially this month in April. This is this is the brutal month, so we'll see. But they did well playing this game. I got no complaints. Uh, we take three points at the end of the day. I really yeah. didn't add much, but you know, here we are. Here we stand. That's it. Fair Whatever. Enough. It's tired. I'm I'm tired. 
It's been a day. It's been a day. <laughs> Chris, what are you? What are your overall thoughts on this game? Yeah, I mean, I all season. I mean, I, I've been relatively. Um, I mean, impressed is maybe the not the quite the right word because. I haven't been like so so impressed with Estrella de Mendoza, and they're not out of the woods yet as far as staying in the division. Yeah. But I will be disappointed if they do end up going down because I- I've liked them at times. I thought that they've played hard, thought they've been they've well been coached. Fun, they've been a they've fun had a team lot to watch. of one goal losses, man. They're very. I mean, <laughs> they gave us a tough time in this game. Um, they're probably aided by uh, sort of a frangu and an early goal. But, Mm -hmm. I mean, they were not easy for us to break down. And the 2-1 win was not a given at all. Um, I I think that this is a team that definitely deserves to stay up. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, I mean, I'll be disappointed. What's the standings actually looking like for who's bottom right now? It's Shabs, Vizela, and uh, Portimonense just fell back in the relegation. Uh, Portimonense is... They're back. Death, uh, they were back. Taxes and Portimon hands in a relegation. They've battle. had a couple months <laughs> out of the drop zone, but they are back, baby. Yeah. Yeah, um, I, I kind of agree with you. I'd like to see us still show up. And Death, Taxes, Portimon hands in a relegation fight. Like, the world is healing. Uh, I mean, it was kind of – it was interesting to see Miguel Lopes man marking Joker as. I mean, yeah. he's done a decent job. Yeah, definitely. No one's really out of the. No one's really out of the. Still is right there, you know. Yeah, no, like, even even up here, no, even like, uh, like up until I would say up to there, like from yeah. 16th to eight, from 17th to 18th, like or yeah. to um eight, like man, like I'm a little. And Family Co was in five. like 12th, and then they won, and then they moved like five places, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be a dog. I think it's still gonna be very much a dog fight for 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 staying up. Uh, between those places, for sure. They are. I agree. Gary. Yeah, Rio Ave. So much. Better. I've not so, been impressed. I mean, it's crazy that they're even in this situation. They have so many, so many almosts. If they go down, yeah. it's just the ultimate almost, right? What could yeah. have been? And I hope that that's because of Pia. Pia looked good actually to start the season. They've kind of and as they won four nothing this past weekend. Somehow. Yeah, as did Bolvista. <laughs> they've they all like it's just teams are starting to le- a lot of these teams are starting to level out now. Is what you're seeing. Yeah. Um and, and back to the Estrella game. I, I thought Nuno Sanz was possibly our best player. Uh very dangerous. Scored our goal. Um put himself in dangerous positions. Was constantly involved in like finishing opportunities, uh crosses, um, dangerous passes. I thought Nuno Sanz was really good in this game. Yeah. It was one of his better games this season. Yeah. I would agree. Yeah, no, no Rabonas from him. I don't think this game. There was a Di Maria Rabona in this game that was dangerous. N- <laughs> it caused some issues. <laughs> <laughs> caused a couple issues. Yeah, but yeah, that was pretty much it for that game. Of course, we mentioned that um, Benfica. We do play Benfica on Saturday at home, and Benfica be... had just won, also sort of riskily. Right before the Estrella game, so we went in. Oh yeah, they they, they missed what two, two, three. three pens. Pens. I mean, two pens, but three. Two, but yeah. they had to retake one, and yeah. they still missed on the retake, <laughs> and they still won one. Now, like God damn it, remarkable. We, we, remarkable. we were so close to glory. <laughs> we were so close to the edge of glory. There, can you imagine the scenes? And also from that uh, Estrella game, Saint just completed ninety minutes for the first time in nearly a year, which is uh, holy. Shocking. And he played Whoa. again today. He played yeah. today too. What a time to be alive! I, do, I wonder what the actual number today. of games he's played. Like, what is the record in this match that he's played consecutively? It must be what five, six, a uh, push. Because there was a stretch like, last year. It was like Ars- matter, yeah. Arsenal twice, Juventus the first game. So it was from like the first Arsenal game all the way through to the Juventus home the first leg. Yeah, yeah, like a month. It's got. It's got to be. Close to that, I don't think. But was there an international break off. in the middle? <laughs> I mean, it could have been. Yeah, like, I don't know. I don't remember. No, the, uh, someone someone will have to point that out to us. I'm sure if they're they're knowledgeable, because yeah, it's it can't be too many games. I would imagine. Yeah, and apparently, Dan needs three more weeks until he can return. Should be ready at the that's, end of April. When I tweeted that, everyone uh, yeah. everyone replied, "You know, uh, don't be in a rush to heal. 
Please don't. No, take, take your time. Your time. Take no your time, rush. King. Take your time, King. It's fine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'd, uh, I'd agree with that That sentiment <laughs> on the social medias. But, like, the one big one, the big news talking point is uh, Ruben Amarim, one of the front runners to be the new Liverpool manager. Uh, Fabrizio Romano is, is said the same. He's also being linked to Barcelona. He's being linked to. We're just going to do a straight everywhere. swap. We're, we're going to sign Jurgen Klopp. <laughs> oh, <my laughs> so, not even worried about it. Yeah. But, man, if what are your guys thinking? Do you think he's definitely gone at the end of the season? Or is it like 50 50? Or. I don't know. I'm being honest. It's really hard to tell. At the beginning of the season, I was guaranteed he's gone but the more he talk the more he talks the more i think he kind of seems to want to stay um yeah i might just be talking out of my ass if he's i wouldn't is the team that wins leaves. the premier league is the team let's just say they win the premier league and they win europa league yeah are they gonna hire everybody that morning i think that's a so. big step up that's a huge step even if they win the, one of those like the only reason why up. Is if you look at the the free agent list of coaches, is there anyone really that you'd be like, maybe Marine like back I in the day Mourinho? I think Mourinho is said, the end uh, back in England. I know right? Jabi Alonso said he's staying, but like, is he really? Is he not right. going to change his mind in July? I, I, do you know why I think he's I think he's holding out for Real Madrid because I think Ancelotti's probably yeah. one more year of Real Madrid. I think he's holding out for the Ancelotti for Ancelotti to go, but. I thought I figured the Liverpool job was his as so as did I. It. So did I. But that him being like I want to stay the extra year, it's kind you of could have the Bayern ride. job too if he wanted that one as well. They were he was yeah. linked to Bayern yeah. and again, like that came around around the same time. And then the the news came out that he's like, No, I'm staying, and that kind of threw monkey wrenches into a lot of teams' plans all of a sudden. Yeah. Um yeah, I don't know because who who is really available as coach. I do think Mourinho is ending up back in England. I guarantee he did his next coaching job is in England. Um, I don't think it would be. I don't think it would be for Liverpool. I think there's just too many egos in the Liverpool locker room for him to deal with. I think like the second he got pissed off at like a Van Dyke or a Trent Alexander Arnold, they they would just not be able to. Their their timbers would be shivered. They would not handle it. So like, who who does Liverpool realistically go after outside of Aberdeen? That's the thing. Like, there's not much out there. And for me. So I think he's gone in the season, regardless that. Regardless of what we do, he's gone. You think? Yeah. For me, it's just like, what more can he do? He's won us a title. He's, he's unless he's two, really around sixteen, winning like a European trophy at that point, or going back to back. Like I, I'm with you. The yeah, yeah, I suppose. But for me, it's just like, what more can he do? European trophy, even still, I think that's unrealistic. As much as I would love us to, when you look at the clubs that are spending that are winning these European championships. It's just not feasible at this time. I think. Especially because next year is the Champions League table. So it can't even fall into Europe League. So it's either Champions League or nothing. So, yeah. and, f- and for me, he got us into round of 16, first time in 10 years. I know we got smacked by Man City, but to be honest, losing 5-0 to the be- one of the best teams of all time is, you know, not too bad. Uh, it's no 12-1, but, you it's, know. Uh, we've, had wor- we've had worse. We've had way yeah. worse. He's, he won us the league. And let's be honest, he has changed the culture from inside and out. The whole culture of sporting has changed for the better since he's come in. The scouting, the, the transfer dinners, the release clauses, the uh, even, even little how, things. Even sporting backstage with, didn't exist when yeah. in, when he wasn't there. I don't say that's an amazing thing. just how he deals like, with, with the media in general. Like, it's not, like, just to compare him to, we're back to Conseil Sal here, but, like, it's such a polar opposite from some of the coaches, other like especially Portuguese coaches, like the Conceição Sals and the Jesus and 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 what have you. He's like not super combative. He doesn't start like stupid bullshit in the media. Like it's nice to just have like a calming presence, and it's not just a war of words where it's like I have to say I have to be the last one to say something semi witty, which is nice. Um, because that's just all Portuguese football in a nutshell. It's just someone's always got to get the last word. And he's just like, I really don't care. I'm just focused on the game. And, like, it's nice to just have that where there's not a lot of bullshit. Yeah. I I, the, I just – what reason for him to – like, there isn't one. And especially – look, if you think of the Liverpool job, 
Klopp was in it for what nearly ten years, probably eight years now. How yeah, often does a like, Liverpool job does okay buy a minute? Fair enough, come to have a bit more often. But like Barcelona, these jobs don't come up too often. So even not not know, crazy, especially at the same time too, where you actually have a choice, right? Yeah, and there's a lot of other questions like you know, do, is Chelsea going to get a new manager? PSG going to get a new manager? Is you know, I'm, any other club going to get a new manager? Manchester United, for example, not, like they've got new owners or they've got new investors. Is Ten Hag going? Hot take, They're, hot take. Ten Hag's gone. Mourinho back to United. Who says no? Uh, United, I think. Nah, you know, I'll die on the hill that if they had just fucking backed him, they'd be I, in a much better position. I think, here's my, my theory on Mourinho. If Villas Boas wins the elections, I feel like he's going to try and get him in. If he doesn't, he's going to go to Newcastle and they're going to get rid of Eddie Howe uh, and bring in Jose Mourinho. Interesting. Because he always had that connection to uh, Bobby Robson. Uh, oh, yeah, Newcastle. sir, Bobby, I suppose. So, might be... I think his next job's in England regardless, but... I, 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 yeah, I, me too. But uh, uh, I say no for this one, by the way. No, no. <laughs> you can't. Go I, from... I, w- I would just for the chaos. <laughs> you can't honest. go from such a calm manager to, like Ruben Amrim. <laughs> We're good, good I with know the press. Talking about how it's nice to have like no bullshit, but like it would be like even for like a just a month, like it would be glory. We would have so much content. Like we would have, we would have so. Think of the content, Sam. It would be glorious, even just for a little. I mean, bit. I know, but just like, come on. Uh, to be fair, like I think it, John will it end I in think... a train. Will it end in a train wreck? More than likely, but like, by God, think of the fun we will have along. Think of the friends we'll make along the way. <laughs> I think Mourinho is actually. I think I could see him at Benfica if they get rid of. Um, I don't Schmidt. know. He's been at their games a few times. He's been at the stadium watching the game. He, you know, he's been at Stubal watching games too. Is he going to go coach Stubal? <laughs> yeah, but why would he watch Benfica specifically? Yeah, I, I, I know, that, as far as I know, I've not seen him at the Alvalo watching a sporting game specifically. I think I've seen that's him at Porto. That's because he can't afford the tickets. Our ticket price are too high. <laughs> <True>. <laughs> he but, uh, no one will lend him his game box. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think he's gone at the, uh, at the end of the season. As much as I don't want him to go, trust me, if I, I'd, I'd happily keep him. Right but yeah, I, I wouldn't. I think I think I lean with you. I think he's gone but i don't think it's as cut and dry as we thought i think it's going to be very it's going to be a very close decision like it's going to basically be like what the circum what he thinks the circumstances are like does he yeah. want to deal with the egos or is the is it like i just want to go make money or is he comfortable and he's like i want to give he, it one more he has to make a day. step up eventually and i'm not saying it's gotta go, it's club, gotta come but, soon but sporting is a big club in Rome. To go to like a Liverpool, to a Barcelona, to someone like that, it is a step up in not just culture in terms of money, in terms of um, like media presence, in terms of just TV viewership. It's all up. It's everything. It's just you're under so much bigger of a microscope, right? Exactly. Like it's just it's crazy the exposure difference. Yeah. So he's he's got to make a jump eventually, and. You know, he has taken risks in the past. Joining Sporting is probably the biggest risk What's of his risk? managerial career. That could have made or, that could so have made, or bro- that could made, made or broke him, and that could have made or broken the club, if exactly. we're being honest. But he saw it out. He is a risk taker, so I guess we'll see. But I'm not too confident. Obviously, I hope he stays. But I, I'd like I'd prefer him to stay because, like, we don't really know who we get. That then it becomes the who do you get if he goes? And I'm not having this discussion again until we know what's going on. We've had this discussion all the time. We're gonna wait. But so. even you know, Ruben Emery's been linked away. Hugo Vian has been linked away to Newcastle as well. Obviously, he's to play for Newcastle. Well, he played uh, for as Newcastle the director of football. Well, so. so uh you know, they're both of them could it could be a whole sort of culture shift. They can go, there then could players be. There go. could be, right? Like, th- this is going to be a very interesting. Shout he's, out. he's going to, he's going to beta mar. He's going to beta mar. He's signing for the boys. We're going to back, man. baby. Bring him back. Bring him back. Uh, do you want to do fantasy or do you want to do league predictions next? Uh, I'll do one more thing, and that is this weird interview slash article that came out. Why? <laughs> Why? Oh, Why yeah, you this was just happened? weird. I mean, I just, I, cool, but yeah, like, it's, he's washed now. If you'd asked me, that, if he wanted to come back, like, even three years ago, I would have said, sure, why not? Like, yeah. But he's totally, completely washed now. 
But it's not even something like, oh, you could bring him in from the atmosphere. Because how many times has he shot on sport over the last 10 years been like, oh, I love sporting, but Porto is my home. And Porto is this, and Porto is that. And it's just like... Well, he wanted... When he no. came... When he was leaving Barcelona, he wanted to come back to sporting. And the only reason he went to Porto was because they included him in the deal to get Deco from Porto, right? Yeah. And also, like he was going to like join... Yeah. It's not like Simao, like, though, where Simao was like... Oh, I might go back to sporting. And I said, no, I'm going to Benfica. It wasn't like that. Like he Kodesma didn't have much of a choice in the matter. And he just he did have some of his best football at Porto. So I understand his affinity. Before he, he came back to Porto from I think it was Bajit Castle, maybe somewhere else. He's got because he's got a couple of stints at Porto. Yeah, Bruno de Cavallo agreed a deal for him to come back, but it fell through for whatever reason. I can't remember exactly what the reason was, but it fell through. He was gonna sign. Oh yeah, I was in like I think it was 20. 20... Maybe 15, 16, maybe 16. It have to be. It have to be like in the mid 2010s. I'm assuming it have to be in and around that time period. Um, yeah. Yeah, I under, I understand his affinity for Porto because he did realistically play his bet. Like most of oh, his yeah. streets never forgets. Hot montage is from his time in Porto. Yeah, but the way he speaks about sporting is like he's so like ominous. He's like they know what they did to me, but he never said what they've done. I don't know. Just Kaiser being Kaiser, I suppose. Uh, but yes, different type of cat. He's a different type. He's a different dude. At the end of the day, right? League predictions. It's only me and Richard get him in, uh, and luckily yeah. I got the uh, the two goal scorers. You got a goal scorers. And Sorry, the, one and goal the scorer. Win. You got a goal scorer and, and the, the, win. the win. I got the win. Uh, we none of us predicted for today. We all forgot. Life happens for the Tasa. You have to go up. Uh, so yeah, zero yeah, points. Yeah. We did have a recount because we re- we realized whoever was handling this at the beginning of the season fucked up. In the Europa League, so if you go to the points table, things are a little closer now. If you go up to the top, so Danny has retroactively been awarded points for the Sturm. It was a Sturm Graz game, which you can see in your frame, anyways. Uh, we had like zero points given to a bunch of us, and we re- I realized today, I'm like, whoever was handling this in the beginning screwed up. So Danny retroactively has been given his three points, and the rest of us have been given our one and two points. Uh, yeah. As follows. Table sta- as it stands, I stand at 77. Chris is at 65. I just have to hold him, hold him off. Uh, Sam is not too far behind. He's creeping up on Chris, only three points. And then Danny is, with his retroactive points, uh, has gained some ground on Sam. He's only two points behind you, sir. So we've got nice uh, we got a bit of a race for sec. We've got a race now for second. It's it's competitive, but uh, I've kind of run away with it. And I just need yeah. to be consistent. Uh, I just need to make sure I get some a prediction in for the re- the remaining games and for the Tasa game. That's it. We gotta start getting some uh, some exact scores here. Down you guys gotta start getting exact scores and goal scorers. That's what you need. Yeah, definitely. it's not over. I'm the title is the title it's race. Not, it's not. not o- it's not over until I'm like not. It's over. I'm not. I'm not conceding the title race quite yet. Chris is going to be at the end of the season. He's going to predict like an 11 nothing game. Everybody to score. <laughs> It'll come through for him all of a sudden. He gets the exact result. All the goal scorers, huge points. It's going to be a top 10 anime comeback. So let's go to fantasy predictions. Uh, this, is not, right. this is where no that anime comebacks right. are happening. This is, fantasy is where no anime comebacks are happening, at least for me and Sam. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to lie. So. To preface this, monster, I got eight points this game week. week. Yeah, you had a monster week. week. But you know, it nearly didn't happen. I was at work, and the work <laughs> Wi-Fi for some reason doesn't work with this app. I don't know what's wrong with it. So it lets okay. you log in, but it won't let you do like any action. So like, you can't change. You can just walk, but you can't, can't do transfers. I bought in. I think I bought in two Porter defenders, and luckily I had. Luckily they didn't Rujo say. And, Nuno and they just didn't. I think I took Nuno Santos out as well. And they just didn't. It didn't save, luckily. So I just. So you almost, week, you but. almost left. What? What? So let's see your bench then. You almost left so many points on your bench. I left oh, Bonza on like the nothing. bench. You oh. left Bonza again. That's the only we. That's the only guy you really realistically left points with. Okay. Yeah, but still, if you, you sub out yeah. like, you know I mean? one of your, if you sub out one of your midfielders, you get an extra like eight or nine points total. So, yeah. Okay. So well, it wasn't a wasn't a bad game week for me, but it didn't happen. Happen. Uh, I did all right. I gained nine points on Chris and eight on Danny, but it really is not going to do much. Yeah, you got so Antonio Silva. Who... Let me down. Uh, Kosh to let me down in goal. Yo, Antonio Silva not help helpful. How is it only a minus one point for Red? I feel like it should be more than that for Red. Yeah, it was really my defenders and my 
excuse me, my goalie, and then I I left like nothing on the bench. So yeah, zero points around. So yeah, yeah. it was just but my guys, my guys in my eleven let me down. Then we got Chris with the uh, he got oh Israel's come in. He's oh, come in. Israel's guy. come in. Look at him go. Uh, well, but, uh, the only the only points you didn't get any points for Kawach. Kawach didn't play. Yeah. Uh, oh no nothing, reserves. No reserve uh, issues. Reserves did goal, not but... come through for me. No, you're mm. you're actually all right this week. All right. Fourteenth in the states though. Not, not bad. He's moved up. He's moved up. I think actually too. Is Good Danny one, still in the top three of Canada? Oh, he's he is. Down. He is. He's been, he's been fluctuating between four and two for the last like month and a half, two months. Uh, they were cost let him down. No, uh, no points for Mark. Uh, what's his no points? Uh, no, one no, point. No, so, it's fine. so it just his starters let him down a couple of them. So, yeah. All right. It's yeah, pretty it's much not... over, anyways. Like I know me and Sam really can't do much. I I was I almost made a run for Eucharist at one point, but I think it's pretty well. I'm like less than a hundred points again, but like you'll probably put a fucking twenty piece on me next week. So. Yeah, but uh, let's look at the next fixtures. Of course, we know who it is, uh, but we will go f- to it anyway. And that is this game right here, 6th of April, 8.30, Sporting versus Benfica. It's going to be a tough game and arguably could be the title decider because we've still got a game in hand, don't forget, but who knows what happens after this game. This, to me, is the title decider. If Sporting win, I think, we like, I'm not going to say that we're going to win, but like it gets closer and closer. I think Benfica could crumble after another loss, especially Schmidt has had a lot of uh, controversy around his managing this season. And there have been some white flags waved at some points, losing 5-0 to Porto, of course. We've still got to play Porto as well. So even still, it is a title decider, but we still got a good run of games. We've got victory. So we have them, we have Shavs. We have more than oh no, this I'm looking on the left. We have them. Who's our schedule after them? I'm trying like what's our remaining game? I know we have Porto one more time. Uh, so we have Gil Vicente after Gil Vicente Benfica. away. Okay. Uh, on Friday. And then we have Familiar Cow. Is that um, no, the makeup the makeup game, yeah. The game in hand. And then we have Victoria, which will be a tough game as well. Because we'll be yeah, before. it's it's them. I think Porto back to back. We have, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. A Porto, yeah, Porto away as well, even worse. Uh, April is a hellscape domestically. It's uh, unbelievable. But I uh, think like, for us, Porto have a game in between here against Gimenez, or maybe between here against Gimenez. So in the um, Tassa, so yeah. maybe that comes in our favor. And to be honest, the wheels are fall- falling off Porto anyway. So, oh, we, they're they're uh, it's between us and Benfica for the title. It's gonna be one of it's gonna be one of those two. Yeah. But also, Benfica Braga is gonna be a, a good game to watch. Definitely one to look out for. Braga the, uh, seems to turn play. up at the Stade de Luz. To be fair, they yeah. love not so much at home, but when they go to visit Stade de Luz, they've taken some points off them the last few years. Yeah, definitely. And then we've got Portimonense, and then we've got Estoril away, and then we've got. We round off with Shams. So nineteenth could be crucial. Hopefully, we can win it before then. But you know, it, depending on, I mean, we're gonna need to start like after this week. We're gonna need to start getting the calculators out. I think it's officially gonna be time to start talking about scenarios of what can and can't yeah. happen. Uh, exactly. We'll see. Because yeah, if we if we win against Benfica, we go four points up. If they win, they go two. But we have the game in hand still. So like it's. It's all kinds of chaos, right? And then if we win the game at hand, Christ, then all of a sudden it becomes friggin' like an eight point advantage, a seven point advantage, or something. Like if if they beat Benfica and they win the game in hand, and and, and things kind of stay the same, like it's it's going to be interesting. But we'll see. Knock on knock on wood here. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Chris, is there any uh, mentalities news you've got uh, going on? We um, lost the toss to Portugal in futsal. Yeah, futsal lost the toss to the Portugal final to Braga, 5-3 in overtime. Yeah, yeah. Handball uh, won their toss of the game. Um, they've advanced to the quarterfinals, I believe. Handball, they beat Porto as well last weekend. Still haven't lost in the league. It's still alive in the toss, still alive in Europe. I mean, we've they're mentioned having a, They're having a season. Handball is having a great season. Um, ladies won, uh, but Benfica beat Braga, 
which yeah. a Braga win would have helped us out a little bit. We're still five points back at Benfica, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, but, but I don't we know are I Braga's now falling off. They're like ten points behind us in third, so second's basically locked up. I I would say, um, hopefully Benfica drops some points along the way. Um, if they can to get back in the make a race. draw for them yeah. once or twice in the next little bit, it would help. I'm trying to think. What's all final four has got to be coming up soon too. Yeah, that's usually in April. Yeah, yeah, so it's usually like the end of April, so a couple of weeks, two, three weeks probably. Who are, who are we playing? I know we're. I know both. We're playing Benfica. Barcelona, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, it's always it's always like Barcelona or some weird <laughs> random whoever Cardinho plays for. Um, yeah, I know Benfica's in there as well, so that should be should be interesting. Yeah, I don't. Oh, I don't know where, I don't know where won the Tasa of the Portugal. I don't really follow volleyball that much, but I know they won the Tasa of the Portugal two weeks ago. Um, and yeah, I think that's really, that's really it. Yeah, there yeah. was there wasn't basketball won their Tasa of the League game this weekend, so they're going to advance to the next round. They play like a group stage in the basketball mm-hmm. Tasa of the League, so they won their group, so they'll advance to the next stage. Um, but yeah. Yeah, fair enough. I think that's it, unless anyone else has got anything to bring to attention. Uh, nothing that I can really think of. Mm-mm. Cool. So I guess we'll wrap it up there. 370 viewers tonight. Thank you all for, for joining in and getting involved in the conversation. If you do want to get involved, feel free to follow us at all things Alvalar down there on all social media platforms, on all podcast platforms as well. Hey, guys, for watching. We'll see you next time. Yeah. Peace.